This is Access Door County, and I am your host, Victoria Serenich. On today's program, we will learn about the Teen Theater Lab in Sturgeon Bay, called Stage Kids at Third Avenue Playhouse. And with us are Robert Bowles, the co-artistic director at Third Avenue Playhouse, and Ryan Patrick Shaw, who is the educational director at Third Avenue Playhouse. Welcome, Bob. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you. Can, which one of you would like to start to tell me how you got involved in theater? What made you, did you take it up as a young person or is it something you developed as a interest later? Uh, I guess I was hooked from like six years old when I was taken to see Ruppel Stiltskin. Uh, and uh, it just, every time I would go, I would just be mesmerized and uh, one thing led to another, and I got involved in high school and college, and, uh, and then I, you know, 35 years later, here I sit. And here you sit. <laughs> and Ryan, what about you? Did you start as a young person? Um, my first show I did when I was in fifth grade, I went to a small Catholic elementary school, mm -hmm. and we would do an eighth grade musical every year, and I was, uh, in fifth grade, they were doing Fiddler on the Roof, and they needed some younger boys to be in it, so that was my first show. And then I did Oklahoma when I was in eighth grade. I played Will Parker and then got into high school and got more and more involved. And I think by my sophomore year of high school, I had decided that I was not going to stop doing theater. Okay, well, I'm glad to hear that you're still doing it and you're also involved with children now because specifically this is the Third Avenue Playhouse Stage Kids Teen Lab yeah. uh, Theater. What does that mean? Which uh, where did that start? I mean, what's a teen theater lab? <laughs> well, um, it's kind of an evolution of what we've been doing with our Stage Kids program since we started at TAP. We knew right away that when we wanted to build an education program that would cover all, all of theater arts. We wanted to cover acting. We wanted to cover um, uh, film acting. We wanted to cover musical theater acting. We wanted to have all of these experiences and we'd had different workshops and different classes over the last two years and then we got to talking about how we could have a class that would encompass everything that we want to have and we are so fortunate that we have a lot of very talented people up here that want to teach theater to young people. So what we started talking just between Bob and myself and James, the other co-artistic director. Mm -hmm. And we realized, okay, great. James could teach musical theater. Bob and I could teach acting. We had Spencer Milligan, who we knew could teach film acting. And we kind of got to the point where we realized, great. So over this 12 class, uh, this six week mm -hmm. course, we would be able to really have a lot of theater education wrapped into a nice, neat little box. Okay. and and. and uh, you are talking about this 12 course, uh, yeah, 12 lesson course that's mm -hmm. over six weeks. Mm -hmm. I saw on the web that this has just ended. When, and was this uh, your first uh, compilation of all these standalone classes? Yeah, this was the first uh, time we decided to, to put all these things together. In, and, uh, and also what it does uh, is it, it enables that we have a lot of talent in and around uh, Door County, not just Sturgeon Bay, uh, people of, of varying backgrounds in the arts. Mm -hmm. So we can bring them in and over the course of say one particular week you could have anywhere from uh, two to four different points of view uh, in, in, in different kind of theatrical dip disciplines. Uh, one of the disciplines uh, we want to incorporate is also playwriting, mm -hmm. uh, dance and movement and all this stuff. So we uh, envision the program growing to, to a point that uh, you know, uh, there'll be a, a dance day. There will be a, a uh, improv improvisational. Uh, day. A lesson, you mean? Well, a lesson. You, you, just we, that? We, we, well, you, well, you're working toward something. May, maybe a, a combination. Uh, in acting, you'll be working maybe on a, on a scene from a play, mm -hmm. or uh, or 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 uh, what they call devised pieces, where the class actually creates its own theater piece. Well, I did uh, see. Ju just utilizing to... their you know, particular talents and strengths and whatever they learned through the class. Okay, I did see that at the end of this 12 week, you had a performance. Mm -hmm. And how the, what was performed and were all the students able to participate? I mean, how did, did they 
do all the bits that were behind the scenes too? And um, well, the performance it was very informal and. We, it kind of evolved as the class evolved, which is something that's really exciting about this particular style of education, is the class is what the students put into it. So throughout the class, we did a lot of scene work because the students that we had in this particular theater lab were really interested in the scene work. And we also did a lot of musical theater work, again, because that's what the students were interested in. So then we got to the capstone, the final uh, class, the performance, mm -hmm. we did that performance like an open classroom so people could come into the class and watch what we do and understand what this theatrical experience this theatrical education educational experience is so we would do a scene and the students would do a scene and then I would give them notes and I would give them an adjustment and then the parents and the people watching the scene would go great, that's how they're learning, that's what they're learning. Okay. And same thing with the musical theater. So it was a demonstration of the class as well. It's it, basically yes. where, where they've arrived at that point. Mm -hmm. So they start at a certain point, they end at a certain point, this is where they are at this ending point. This is, this is so we're not, we didn't want to set it up as being this, this performance Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for family and friends. So everyone expects it's going to be this final Broadway play. In, in effect, what you're doing is demonstrating the, the teaching techniques and the learning yeah. techniques. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, basically what, what, what they've learned thus far mm -hmm. and, and the final uh, capstone performance is simply a continuation of that. Okay. Uh, so it's not repeating something that's been rehearsed or rehearsed for that day. Okay. What does, when you said scene, you said there, this particular group mm -hmm. for this six week period mm -hmm. was more interested in scene work. What is scene work? Scene work is uh, taking a scene from a particular play. For example, one of the uh, scenes that we did was a scene from Our Town, which a lot of people are familiar with Our Town from high school. Mm -hmm. It's a show that a lot of people know. And we had two students who I gave a scene from that and then throughout the class, when we had scene work days, we would work on character work. We would work on blocking the scene, where they go during the scene. We would work on why they say what they say at this particular moment, which is all of the questions that us, that we as professional actors ask ourselves. And that's how we work in a rehearsal for a show. So when we're doing scene work during the class, it's very much giving them an idea of what it's like to work on a professional show, but just for this one particular scene rather than an entire play. So the, so the students don't have to imagine the characters, emotions, and everything that's going on for the entire story, but just for the one where it's in this room, uh, where yeah. the, only these characters are interacting. Well, it's, it's, it's really breaking down uh, what you need to do in order to reach that final point. So yes, you, you would have all, all the stuff you just said, all the, the emotions and everything else going on, but this is how you arrive at that point. So it's really uh, giving them tools to, to uh, figure out for themselves uh, and the people that they're working with how to arrive at a final uh, point. And that just, it's a process. Mm -hmm. And so it's really, we're teaching them the process of working on in this case, a scene from a play. Okay, so if we were going to take it through the week by week, and I, I do have your outline uh -huh. from the website, which I thought was very helpful. Uh, you start out with the introduction to the theater, mm -hmm. and you go through scene work, and then you go to musical theater mm -hmm. lab. What's the, mm -hmm. Tell me about what you do with that, because everybody's not always very musical. No, um, and that was something that was really interesting, because there were a couple students who'd said, I'm a little nervous about singing, and I said, it's okay, we're going to deal, we're, gonna, we're going to learn how you can use your voice in musical theater. And then James came in, and the first day, and very similar, he, he said to them, one of the first things he said, you have the voice that you have, you can't change that. And that's true. You, none of us can change the voice that we have. We can train it, and we can increase our skill level, but we can't change the voice that we have, and that's, and I think when he set it up with those parameters that, great, I have the voice that I have, and I'm going to use the instrument that I have the best that I can, then it's just fine. And it's a really safe environment mm -hmm. that we'd set up over the first few classes that they understand, great, I can play in here. I can 
have a safe environment where people aren't going to go, ha ha, you made a mistake or you didn't sound great. Because right. we start off the first day during the introduction class, we do a lot of improvisational games, a lot of kind of getting to know you games where, and that's something that I teach and I love teaching it because I have, they have to be silly. Mm -hmm. And it's these 14, 15, 16, 17 year olds, these high schoolers who aren't used to being silly in, in front, front of, of other friends. people. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. And seeing them do that and then laugh with each other, not at each other, they have this really safe environment that's established right off the bat. So then they can go forward into a musical theater class and go, great, I'm going to sing today. Mm -hmm. I don't sing normally, but I'm going to sing today. Oh, but or, I'm going to have a good time doing exactly. it. Or, yeah. um, so they learned, they did uh, Wells Fargo Wagon. They learned that from the Music Man. Mm -hmm. And James taught them a soft shoe number, which... Dancing. Dancing, exactly. So we had, we had high school boys, high school girls, who I think only one of which was somewhat of a dancer. Mm. And they so were was, all doing it. So it was fun. They enjoyed oh, it. It was a blast. And, and you start out... Now, you were going to say something, Bob. What was that? Uh, well, I was just the same way as far as musical theater goes. I mean, first of all, with someone like James, who's teaching that, uh, you're, you're dealing with someone with extensive Broadway uh, musical credits. Mm -hmm. And a musical uh, theater is not all American Idol, where they're singing power <laughs> anthems, you know, at, right. uh, you know, at, at E above, you know, you know, stratosphere. Right. Uh, no, the musical theater encompasses all kinds of voices. Mm -hmm. Uh, tradition, you know, not and all not traditionally, you know, great voices, but it's it's theater is all about using your voice, and, mm -hmm. and, and in a training program for actors, you are constantly you, you whether or not you sing, you you go take voice lessons. Whether or not you dance, you take mm -hmm. dance lessons. And whether or not you become a singer or a dancer is irrelevant. It's 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 part of uh, just. Learning how to use all those Learning tools. how to use your voice, mm -hmm. learning how to use your body, learning how, you know, and uh, so, so that's all part of a comprehensive uh, program, which is, a, mm -hmm. again, part of uh, the lab uh, idea. So tell me about comedy or tell me about improv. Can you do it here? Can you improv something? Well, how, how would you do <laughs> well, that? How, this interview, yeah, right? there you go. How would you do that with the students when they come in? Tell what's a typical. You probably do it the well, similar thing for uh, an improvisation often. class. A lot of it is, like I said, is just getting them comfortable and getting them not to think so much, mm -hmm. which seems silly, but a lot of times this gets in our way, and we we build up all these barriers our whole life that keep us from just diving into something, just going full tilt. And for me, a lot of my background in theater is from an improvisation standpoint. I did a lot of improv comedy in college and before that in high school. So for me, I really am able to relate that a lot. So I do, I have them come in, we do theater games, uh, really fast games. Is it uh, possible to describe one? Because everyone that's watching is not going to be a theater right. person. And I'm not a theater person, sure, we'll, so we'll, when you we'll say do, a theater game, I uh, what do we do? Do Scrabble? I'll do one or, of the first you know, ones. All right. mean, checkers? So I mean, what, what? One of the first games that I start them out with is called Zip, Zap, Zop. So all of us would have to repeat that together. So Zip, Zip Zap, Zop. Zop. And again. Zip, Zip Zap, Zop. Zop. And that order is very important. Zip, Zip Zap, Zop. Zop. What we do is, so we're going to go, and we'll, we, we would be standing up, but for this purpose... We can stand we, yeah. up. All right, can great. we stand up? Sure. All right. Stand it up. Yeah. So... Hang on so we'd seat. be in a circle. Usually there'd be more than three of us. So I would start off, I would say zip. I would point to someone and say zip. That person would then point to someone else and say zap. Zap. Bob would then. Zap. So zip. Zap. 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 Zap, exactly. <laughs> I zapped you because I didn't want to zap him again. <laughs> so then he would go. Zip. Zap. Zap. 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 Stop. Zip. Oh, I exactly. I, so I'm you understand. Out. So it's really. I'm it's, out. So a lot of it's really fast paced, and we have layers to that game that we keep on adding on. There's a lot of different games like that that are really fast paced and that get you thinking, that get you out of your head, so you can just be, which is a really. And you're responding to the moment. You, there's no time to think. Right. Uh, it's that uh, rock, paper, scissors thing yeah. of zip, zap, zap. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or another big uh, improv thing is uh, it's called yes and. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you basically you accept whatever you're being told. So if I if I if I go, uh, uh, I love that scarf you're wearing around your neck. May I have it? Yes, and. I would like you to know where this scarf came from. This scarf was handmade by the leprechauns that were introduced to me by Ryan. Isn't that correct? Yes, and I met those leprechauns in Ireland, and one of them was named Seamus O'Patty, and he was one of the forefathers of all all leprechauns. <laughs> so you can you, know, you can yeah. go on for forever like that, or you know, or just. There are all kinds of different kinds of mint propagands, but the yes and is important because uh, it's you have you have to accept what's the, the information that's being given you, and then then take it somewhere else mm -hmm. as opposed to uh, rejecting it, which is often the first instinct of beginning actors. I mean, they'll they'll say, uh, "May may I ha may I have your scarf?" Uh, no. No, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to walk. Let's go do this. Uh, I'm going to okay. you know. So uh, it's it's a way of, of uh, just just accepting the given circumstances, uh, regardless of how silly they might be or outrageous or whatever. Uh, okay. You know, you might start a, a improv scene where where you're uh, in a. I want to take your chair. In a burning building. You have to go stand over there because you can't have your chair anymore. Well. I don't want to be in this chair anyway, so thank you so much. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, and so you flow with it and take uh, the story and make it your own. Uh, so now you're in control of that story. Right, you and I might change the location. We might you know, we start off here uh, in City Hall and end up on a beach somewhere, and it could happen mm -hmm. in a blink of an eye. And, and yes, and little did you know, this chair is a rocket ship. Exactly, and then <laughs> it becomes, becomes that. So, uh, and again, it gets people out of, gets it out of your head and gets you thinking on your feet and you don't have time to think. When, when, you, do, when you take the time to think, uh, you know, it, it... Then it doesn't work. It's, it doesn't it's work, but I mean, you are actually tough. thinking. What it is, is is learning to trust yourself. Because you are thinking, whether you think you're thinking or not. <laughs> uh, you know, so it's learning to trust uh, your, your first instinct, the first uh, impulse you might yeah, it's have. It's building up some self-confidence. You can yeah, talk in front of strangers exactly. and, it's, and it's, uh, the world isn't going to come to an end no. right now. It and sounds really good for young people. Yeah, well that's exactly, you hit on something that we always like to talk about is that this, whether or not the students that take these classes are going to go out and be a professional actor, are going to go to Broadway, are going to go to Hollywood, we're teaching life skills. Mm -hmm. We're teaching them confidence. We're teaching them the ability to get up there and see a group of people and great, all right, I'm gonna to talk to you. And I, or that's what lawyers do. That's what people giving big presentations have to do. Doctors have to have confidence. And there's so many things that mm -hmm. they really, that, that it goes beyond just the art. That there's all of this, all of the life skills that they're learning. So these, this six week period has ended. You've had the capstone performance. What's the next plan for stage kids? Well, we have, we're gonna do another round of these starting in, in April May. 30th, April 30th through June 7th. And that's already up on the website or it'll be up shortly? That will be up shortly. It'll be up shortly. In, in between that, we're doing a, a full production with, I'm working with 11 uh, uh, high school students, mm -hmm. uh, six of which are from Sebastopol. Uh, the others are from uh, Gibraltar and Southern Door and Sturgeon Bay, and uh, we're doing a play called Columbinus, which uh, is uh, in part about uh, the Columbine High School uh, incident in 1999, uh, and you know, and and the high school students uh, taken from interviews and eyewitness accounts mm -hmm. and all that what happened that that horrible day, but. On the broader picture, it's it's really about a group of high school students going through a typical day in the life of a high school student and how they're treated, what they're thinking, the stresses that they're going through, and, and all that. So this is a drama. This is a drama. It it, it was take the all the text was taken from uh, interviews from high school students all across the country. Oh. Uh, so actually, most of the play does not deal with Columbine at all. It deals with these. Uh, High school students that you don't even know their names, you just know what mm -hmm. their what their labels are: jock, prep, perfect, loner, sure. freak. Yeah, it how gives you an idea of how they characterizes them. Right, these and, archetypes and, of mm -hmm. high school students, and, and how they, you know, uh, what they go through on a typical day in terms of uh, 
the, their interactions with other students, with teachers, with counselors, uh, what they're thinking, what they're thinking yeah. while this is going on. Oh, so they get uh, to voice the silent mm -hmm. voice. They, the they voice, step yes. aside and, yes. and this is what I'm thinking. Exactly. That's always, I always want to know what everybody's well, you know, thinking. And, and the tie-in with Columbine simply is that uh, these high school students, the, the Columbine high school students and the Columbine high school was every high school. And, and we mm -hmm. still to this day don't know what triggered these two boys mm -hmm. to do what they did. Yeah. And so uh, this sort of lays out a cross section of, of students going through whatever they're going through. And, and then yeah. these two boys emerge out of it, but there's no rhyme or reason why mm -hmm. these two boys and not that girl and, and, and that boy or, or, right. or whatever. And it sort of lays out all the, uh, evidence, so to speak, uh, you know, all the things that we can see and, and saying, okay, here is what exists, here's mm -hmm. what's happening. Uh, How did we get from there to here? Exactly. It, well, the, the conversations that'll provoke after the performance. Exactly. And it's still going on, and which is why we wanted to do a show like this. It's so important. I mean, there, Bob talked about one that in the first rehearsal, he said, this was like the, when before this, you could maybe count on one, you could count on no fingers how many mass school shootings there were. Mm -hmm. and he said students list, asked them to list what they could think of now for massive school shootings or shootings of that type and they just, the list went and on and on and they all knew it and it's all before, for them, this has been their entire life. They don't right. remember a world that didn't, that have, didn't have this have. danger in their have. school. You yeah. know, and, and, and you know, we've not had anything close to that happening here in Door County, but still. But people you know, do move and go to other places too. And well, I know, but I mean, the, 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 school, the schools here are, are, are they're, they're preparing for that. I mean, they're Absolutely. certainly aware of it. So the teachers and administrators mm -hmm. are having to deal with it. Students are aware of it. And, you know, they, they have, uh, drills and, and, and you know guidelines that they they all go through so you know it's affected you know it has not happened here and hopefully will never happen here mm -hmm. but it's still part of it, it's part still of their, part of their growing up part it's of their still growing part up of their and, their society yeah. and, and so, that they will live you know, all of the variety uh, that you're exposing your the students to sure. in stage kids you're taking them through music you're taking mm -hmm. them through dance, you're taking them through improv where they're happy, you're teaching them drama, you're taking mm -hmm. serious subjects, and you're doing this right here in Sturgeon Bay. Uh, we're, we're, we're fighting the good fight. Uh, Third <laughs> Avenue Playhouse. Because, well, because uh, the Children's Theater, Children's Theater, I don't like to call it that so much, but certainly anyone under, under 21, uh, they're not being exposed to the arts mm -hmm. uh, in, in the way that I was when I, when I grew up. And, uh, and you and it's it, it's really leaving a hole in their in their education because uh, you don't, if you don't have this creative outlet to use, mm -hmm. uh, you'll you know, find one. You'll, <laughs> you'll you'll find one, you know. But uh, you know, it's 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 really you know. I I, I taught college and you know and I confronted all these uh, freshman college students, and virtually none of them have gone to the theater, mm -hmm. done any kind of artistic endeavor whatsoever, nor felt the need to. Uh, and, and so this is a good thing, that uh, you're making this possible for these young people yeah. to get involved. Their peers will know about it. Their mm -hmm. parents will know about it. Our viewers will know about it. <laughs> people can go to the website to find out, uh, 3rdAvenuePlayhouse.com. That's right. They can uh, submit an email to info at 3rdAvenuePlayhouse.com. Mm -hmm. They can call TAP at the box office at 920-743-1760. And we are really pleased that you're doing this right here in Door County, in Sturgeon Bay, and I want to thank you for being here today. Well, thank you're you welcome. for having us. Thank you for informing us about Stage Kids, an offering at Third Avenue Playhouse right here in Sturgeon Bay. Bob, Brian, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. You have been watching Access Door County with your host, Victoria Serenich. Access Door County is carried exclusively on the Sevastopol Channel 986. Thank you for watching.